What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today, we are back at it with the Glass Notes Insight. It is week 24, and it's the darkest phase of the bear market. Before we get into this, I wanna kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all of those loyal subscribers over the years who have. Also, please turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Down there in the description are a bunch of other links. Go explore the Odyssey, which is also library, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, they're all there, okay? Follow me, engage, let's have fun. And leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I appreciate all of the support, good or constructive criticism is welcome. Please just be kind and compassionate. I find this and I encourage it to be the best way of working in the world. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The darkest phase of the bear market with Bitcoin prices selling off to the mid 20Ks, a plethora of macro indicators suggest the market is entering the deepest phase of this bear cycle. Fundamentals have deteriorated and even long-term holders are now realizing significant losses. Bitcoin and digital assets have experienced yet another chaotic week of downside price action, losing the open of 31,693 and trading to a new multi-year low of 25,150. And you know that we're even much further than that now, less than 21,000. Macro headwinds remain a large scale driver with the latest US CPI print of 8.6% being above expectations and another two year to 10 year US treasury bond yield curve inversion occurring in the early hours on Monday. This has been met with a large rally in the DXY as Bitcoin closes with its 10th red candle in 11 weeks. Bitcoin network utility continues to languish with the macro uh, metrics like the RVT entering the uncharted bearish territory despite continued accumulation across shrimps, which are less than one BTC in whales alike. Price support remains far from established Despite any macro valuation metrics continuing to flag oversold conditions, Bitcoin remains correlated with the traditional markets with prices taking a beating accordingly. In this edition, we explore how the current bear market is now entering a phase aligned with the deepest and darkest phases of previous bears. The market on average is barely above its cost basis and even long-term holders are now being purged from the holder base. <clears throat> A meeting with cost basis with the market trading into the mid and low 20k range it is approaching one of the most significant and fundamental on-chain metrics the realized price this metric represents the average price of every coin in the supply valued at the time it was last spent on chain the realized price at 23,430 is rarely visited by spot prices outside the deepest and latest stages of the bear markets March 2020 and the end of 2018 bear market were the last instances where the market was on an aggregate holding and ear unrealized loss. The MVRV score the MVRVZ score then compares the spot value of Bitcoin against the realized price to obtain an oscillator. This tool can help to identify statistically meaningful deviations away from the intrinsic value and is used to assess overall and undervalued conditions. Values equal to the mean, the black line typically mean, along with the deep late stage bears, this current, uh, the current market has now fallen to just plus 0.26 standard deviation above the mean, which historically would be considered a value zone, especially so when the weighted average for an upwards drift in the z-score. Nevertheless, past bear cycles have shown that negative MVRVZ values are often seen before a bear market concludes and can pers persist in that state for some time, order of months in 2018 and into a year in 2000, 
15. So here's the 2019 COVID crash. And now Bitcoin hodlers soften up within the structural downtrend that has been in place since November. We have seen a variety of behavioral phases and Bitcoin spending behaviors taking place. We can use these changes in behavioral uh, behavior to gauge how aggregated investor sentiment has changed. The accumulation trend score is a useful tool to observe these changes by assessing the magnitude and duration of on-chain Bitcoin balance growth or contraction. It displays the aggregate accumulation distribution weighted for all cohorts. December 2020 to January 21, the bull, mark, bull market buying as investors entered the market and created the bullish impulse to the then 64,000 all-time high. January 21 to October 21, softening and general distribution in part of result of declining spot demand after the GPTC premium turned to a discount, which click there and you can follow further. October 21 to January 22, the post all-time high buying demand, which was later distributed. And January 2022 to May 2022, intermittent accumulation distribution, culminating in the Luna UST motivated sell-off, as we read four weeks ago. In the current market, we have seen one month with accumulation trend score north of 0 .01, sorry, 0 0.08, signifying high positive balance changes across the market. This is a notable shift from the intermittent accumulation before the Luna sell-off and may suggest an improved investor perception of value at prices and below 30,000. Based on those ranges, we can see these different phases of accumulation to distribution, accumulation and distribution, and accumulation in this current market. We can also look towards the liveliness metric to understand the market preference for hodling or distributional behaviors. Liveliness defines the balance between aggregate coin day destruction and coin day creation. It can therefore be used to provide confluence with the destruction and accumulation regimes. Liveliness has remained in a structural downtrend since August of 2021. Bitcoin is firmly within the regime of aggregate coin day creation as hodling dominates. However, as we have explored in previous editions, with only the hodler class remaining, their demand side remains too light to contain the current sell action side. We can further confirm this by assessing the three month position change for liveliness shown in purple below. A general accumulation range can also be highlighted since the great minor migration of July of 21. However, this coin day creation regime is losing momentum and trending towards an equilibrium position based on the current trend. This reflects the general uncertainty in markets, which is resulting in increased investor de-risking of spot positions. The hodler net position change brings these observations into the supply domain and can be used to estimate the magnitude of coin volume hodler base is accumulating or distributing. This metric indicates that based on the degree of coin dormancy at present, approximately 15,000, 20,000 BTC per month are transitioning into the hands of hodlers. And this has declined around 64% since early May, suggesting a weakening accumulation response. We have seen this changing phases of investor conviction and spending behavior over the last 18 months. In particular, we have identified that in both instances at the 30K level, May to July in 21, and currently the investor buy side sentiment appears to be stronger than any other price level in this cycle. A bifurcated market. We have established that investors do appear per to perceive value in the sub 30,000 range Despite this demand being insufficient uh, thus far in providing price support, next we'll break down which cohorts have been participating in the accumulation to further refine these observations. The trend accumulation score by cohort allows a more granular assessment into which wallet cohorts, which wallet size cohorts are accumulating and distributing and to what degree. 
the shrimps, which are less than one Bitcoin, and whales greater than 10,000, excluding exchanges and miners, have been aggressively accumulating since the price slump to the 25,000, 32,000 range. This remains in effect throughout the last two months of depressed prices. Crabs to sharks, on the other hand, which are 1 to 100 BTC, probably, you know, major traders in the space, cohorts a transition from neutral to a distributive phase during this sell-off phase. This suggests a potential decline in confidence. Thus, the near-perfect score of 0.9 plus seen in the accumulation trend score over the recent weeks are being driven by the very large, greater than 10K, BTC and relatively small cohorts, it is interesting to note that while the whale entities were driving distributors at the 45,000 to 35,000 levels in zone A and are currently the prime accumulators in this current lower range of 25,000 to 32,000. Next, we can assess the 30 day rate of change supply held by shrimp addresses with less than one BTC. The 30-day range of change provides insight into the raw position change to the number of coins held by this smaller and likely retail level cohort of investors. Although the current rate of, in, of balance growth is waning, it is preceded by the most aggressive and consistent accumulation period post Bitcoin initial rise in the last 18 months. These smaller holders have seen a net balance growth of plus 20,863 Bitcoin since May 19th Luna crash, providing confluence with accumulation trend score by cohort. On an absolute magnitude basis, the shrimps have added 96,300 BTC to their holdings since November of all time high. This equates to a plus 451% of the circulating supply and 48.6% of the new coin issuance over the same period. We can visibly see that the steepening positive gradient of shrimp owned supply, these small holders appear unfazed, rightly or wrongly, by the prevailing downtrend as they continue to constantly accumulate spot BTC. The other cohort of interest assesses the 10K plus BTC whale cohort looking at the monthly position change of their addresses. We can support our previous observations that this cohort has been accumulating throughout the 25,000 to 30,000 price range. This cohort has a monthly position change peak of around 140,000 BTC per month, increasing their balance by adding a 306,358 BTC since the November all-time high of 2021. That's a lot. The entity adjusted unspent realized price distribution by wallet cohort examines the price points where this supply distribution was last transacted and by which cohort. Around the 30,000 to 40,000 price buckets, we can see significant price clusters associated with a diverse range of wallet cohorts, indicating these two price ranges experience significant volumes of supply changing hands. However, there is little coin volume transacted between 27,000 and 20,000, which may manifest as a region of high volatility and potential little support. The, deteri the deterioration of fundamentals. The RVT ratio compares the realized capital, the realized capitalization against the daily volume settled on chain. This provides insight into the daily utilization of the network on chain volume relative to its intrinsic value realized cap. A general framework for the interpretation of the RVT is. High values and uptrends indicate poor utilization and a slow down in the network utilization. Low values and downtrends indicate high utilization and uptick in network utilization. Stable sideways values indicate the current utilization trend is likely sustainable and in equilibrium. The red band denotes an RVT ratio of 80 or above, suggesting the network valuation is now 80 times larger than the daily value settled. This is, an 
This is indicative of a barren on-chain activity landscape, which is historically a result of extended bearish price action, flushing cost-sensitive participants from the network. In the past bear cycles, an underutilized network has provided confluence with bear market bottoms. Should network utilization increase and RVT manages to break lower, it may signal improving fundamentals. However, with the RVT ratio currently at its highest since 2010, a continued break higher would uh, enter somewhat uncharted bearish territory where the network valuation is even more overvalued relative to network activity. The entity adjusted dormancy flow model can also be used to compare market valuation to adjust to network utilization from the perspective of the average coin age spent in the network. Dormancy measures the average amount of coin days destroyed on a per coin transacted basis. Dormancy flow then compares the market capitalization to dormancy in USD terms, thus, compare, thus capturing deviations in spending behavior against the market valuation. Dormancy flows continue to trade at a historical lows, suggesting that the market valuation is low relative to the uh, time-weighted on-chain transaction volume. Previous instances of dormancy flow at these levels have typically coincided with bear market uh, cap capitulation events and periods of maximum pain. In line with the weakening liveliness of hodler performance, this aligns with the condition where the oldest Bitcoin hodlers holders were purged from the network. A purging of events, sorry, a purgeon of purging of even the strongest hands. Long-term holders and short-term holders are dichotomous by nature and thus value different things. Short-term holders are statistically more sensitive to price volatility as their cost basis is much closer to the current spot price. Long-term holders generally represent the hodler cohort, which are relatively price insensitive. This cohort is more likely to weather volatility and price drawdowns in the pursuit of long-term value. The spent price is a model that is that represents the average cost basis of coins that were spent each day. This can be split into uh, split to analyze the long-term holder and short-term holder components to identify divergences between their spending behaviors. It is uncommon for the LTH cohort to spend coins with a higher average cost basis than their sister STH cohort. However, this does occur when entering a deep capitulation zone where even the strongest hands are purged from the asset. The chart below compares the spent price of LTH to STH, which we can see that LTHs are currently spending coins with a higher cost basis than STHs previously. Uh, instances of this have coincided with the deep bear market finales lasting between 52 days in 2020 and 514 days in 2015 and accompanied by additional drawdowns in price of minus 40 to minus 65 percent. Are we in that final finale? Comparing the aggregate price, uh, sorry, comparing the aggregate market cost basis realized price to the LTH cost basis shows that the two are currently converging. The LTH cohort usually has the lowest on-chain basis and this directly ties with their trading ideology of buying the buying low prices in value zones, thus the aggregate price is lower. Therefore, with the LTH cost basis approaching the aggregate cost basis from below, it is an indication that the current holdings of the smart money cohort have not be outcome the broader market. Previous instances where LTH realized price is higher than aggregate realized price also coincide with the deepest phases of the bear market. In conclusion, the Bitcoin market has entered a phase coincident with the deepest and darkest bear cycles of the past. Prices barely hold above the aggregate cost basis and, and captured by the realized price. And on-chain volume fundamentals have deteriorated further. Historically, this phase has taken on the order of 8 to 24 months to pass as the bear market uh, hammers out a final bottom. 
of the highest note is that long-term holders are currently spending coins with a higher cost basis than short-term holders and their cost basis is barely more profitable than the aggregate market. In the past, this has signaled the start of the final and painful washout phase of all remaining sellers, unfortunately, accompanied by a 40 to 64% price decline. All eyes are on conviction and support provided by the uh, Bitcoin hodler class now. Let's see what happens. Let me know in the comment section what you think about all this. It's devastating across the market. Please, let's talk about it. Be in good spirits. Do your best to go out and do something you really enjoy. I love you all. Take care. We'll talk soon. Peace.